Thank you for stopping by the channel. Today I bring to you a project that I had sitting around for a few months. I installed an Ultimate 64 Elite motherboard into a VIC-20 computer case. I never cared for this particular computer, the VIC-20. I just don't have any real emotional ties to it. I was always a Commodore 64 fan, and this case came out a few years before it, and I was too young to really appreciate it. But the case looks mostly the same, it just has some different colors. I found this particular VIC-20 online for $70, and that included shipping. That was a great deal. It's in great shape. I don't know if the motherboard actually worked, but that really wasn't why I was buying this. I was buying it for this project, and because it was in immaculate shape, it was gorgeous, and the price was right. This is the original motherboard. No idea if it works, because I don't have a power supply that fits it, and it's not the type of power supply that you can just buy and then use in another project, so I never bothered to get one. I really have no plans on using the original board anyway, even though it seems to be in good shape. Hopefully it works. I'm going to reach out to a few YouTube channels that are into this sort of thing to see if anybody has any interest in it. I prefer to give it away rather than toss it in a landfill. The Ultimate 64 Elite Motherboard is a modern manufactured board that has an FPGA chip in it designed to run like the Commodore 64. The VIC-20 machine I have here has the exact same housing as the Commodore 64, so the board's going to work just fine for this case. I bought this motherboard from a website called Gideon's Logic, and it's an overseas company with a lot of good Commodore 64 stuff. This particular unit came in stock, and I managed to catch one. It took about a month to get here. I've ordered plenty of things since the supply chains got kind of strained, and some of the things I ordered took almost a year or more to ship. So getting this one in less than a month, that was pleasantly fast, and I appreciate it. It also arrived in great shape, and I have to say it was packaged exceedingly well. The board had the exact right amount of packing material around it, it was wrapped in bubble wrap, and it made the trip no problems whatsoever. It also came with the power supply, which is great. This new board has a lot of benefits over a stock Commodore 64. Mainly it's around accessibility, some modern compatibilities, and of course, you do get modern quality. These are new components. I certainly have an original Commodore 64 already, and I purchased that like a year ago. It's a great system, refurbished, and it works fantastic, but this is an easier solution compared to, I don't know, trying to actually find an older system to buy, then examining it to replace any faulty capacitors, to test it, to make sure the power supply is correct, or finding peripherals. With this particular project, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. There are ports on the back of the machine, including some modern USB ports for those who want to tinker. Most important here is having an HDMI out. This is probably the best way to get any sort of an output for the Commodore 64 to a modern screen. It doesn't require any special plugs or converters. It's great. The only thing you really have to do with this project is figure out how to get a side panel just to cover the joystick ports. That actually forced me to start learning how to use my 3D printer, and it resulted in this side panel to cover the joystick ports on the right. That was kind of the most time-consuming part of this whole process. I mean, the motherboard basically just plugs into the case. Then you plug in the LED and keyboard, and then you can close it up. It only has three screws. The systems are older, the way they were manufactured, so over time, if these are opened a lot, if you strip the screws, or if the clips inside the housing break, there are still things you can do to repair these things. People have a lot of solutions for these problems, but some of them are going to require a 3D printer. In this case, everything was in great shape. After you close the case, you do have to perform a mild setup on the motherboard. You're going to have to find a couple of files online, put them on a USB stick, and basically you plug it in and flash them to the board. It's not difficult. You just need the system files. You'll need the system kernel, the system basic, some character ROMs, and the disk drive code. Truthfully, these are not hard to locate, and all you have to do is plug in the stick with the files, you call up the motherboard menu, you locate the right area, and you point to these files. You do this once, and then the system should be set up. There are certainly other menu items you can adjust along the way, but that's going to depend on what you're trying to do, of course. After the setup, you just need to find files to load. They are all over the internet, of course, and you just need to get what you want, put them on a USB stick, or 
If you have actual Commodore 64 peripherals, there are ports available on this system in the back for you to plug them in and load. The main way this system functions is pretty great. The power button turns on the machine with a simple press, and if you press and hold for 4 seconds, it's going to turn the machine off. A quick press opens the master menu once the system's on. You're going to use this to navigate to files in different system settings. You can also adjust the speed of this system, although my understanding is that this really is only useful for a few very specific games. Apparently this might help the game Elite, which is something I actually hope to play at some point. Overall, I really like the way this one turned out. It looks and runs fantastic, and the menu functionality they offer is really useful. Having such easy access to a gigantic pool of software is also pretty awesome. On eBay, you can buy a VIC-20, probably for less than 100 bucks, and you can get Commodore 64s as well in all different types of configurations. Some aren't going to be tested, and a bunch of them are just going to be cases, there are tons of projects you can actually go through to try to fix up these types of system using original or modern parts, and I think they're pretty fun if you're into that sort of thing, which clearly I am. One PSA for people that might be trying to get an old Commodore 64 running, you should avoid using original power supplies. Capacitors deteriorate over time, and we're talking 40-year-old parts. So if you do find yourself buying an old Commodore 64 machine online, and it comes with a power supply, I would suggest tossing the supply and don't plug it in. It's just not worth the risk of possibly frying your motherboard. I'm actually in the middle of another Commodore 64 project that I hope to finish in a few weeks. I bought a Commodore 64 case from Hungary, and I'm waiting to try to get a Raspberry Pi working inside it. I hope to have that one up and running soon. Past this, this winter I'm going to have to worry about building a bookshelf to house all my various Commodore machines. I actually have a bunch in this style, and I think I need to put them in a series of shelves. Well, that's all I have today for the Ultimate 64 VIC-20 project. If interested, please feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, and thank you for stopping by to take a look. Hope to catch you on another video.